Inca, um, who is seven years old, uh, very inexperienced as far as seeing the world, has worked very much at home and, and with my trainer. Um, he has come on a lot through patience and strengthening. Um, in the canter work, he, he is now getting more confident in his flying changes, and I started that uh, through canter walk and counter canter exercises. So once he was established and settled and balanced in his counter canter, I then also looked at whether I could bend him to the inside as well as the outside in counter canter. So I was getting him loose and prepared for a flying change to the inside. He wasn't tight and against that new inside rein, if you like, um, which would make room for the hind leg to jump through. I also made sure he was really on my aids, and that takes months, um, that he would canter from one lead, come back to walk politely like a feather and not like a stone, and slam into it, but come down sitting on his hind legs and not slam on his front legs. And then I could strike off to an outside lead if I chose, and then back to an inside lead through walk, and I could repeat that until the horse was really listening and waiting for me. And then eventually, instead of changing, for instance, from outside counter canter, outside lead from counter canter, I'd prepare him, engage him as if I was coming into walk, and then I would change my legs um, fairly normally, not too slow, but a reasonable to get a reaction from him. And hopefully, he would then change, um, instead of walking, he would miss out the walk and fly or jump the flying change through to the inside lead. Most of us tend to do it on diagonals first because um, they psychologically know they're changing direction and so we'll want to change onto that lead. Avoid doing your flying changes very near a corner because that will encourage a late behind or short behind change because you'll be thinking of turning. Um, once they have learned to do them on a diagonal, I would quite quickly start to put them somewhere else because one, you don't want them associating every diagonal as a flying change and they get wound up every time you touch a diagonal. But two, you can really focus on the straightness, having a wall on your outside and changing to the inside. You can see how far they're jumping away from the track or, or not. Um, and also you can ride, uh, if you do them say at E and B, you've got space to set them up, prepare them, and space to land and continue riding straight towards the other end of the arena. So you're not always turning straight away. And, and eventually perhaps twisting a change. So concentrate very much on keeping them straight. Once you've landed from your flying change, your next challenge is the control afterwards. That may again take months. Don't worry if you've got a hot, hot horse and you keep thinking, I'm never gonna get the control back. I've worked so hard to get the control with my hot horse. And then suddenly it all goes out the window when you teach them flying changes. You will get bucks, you will get explosions, but look at it positively, it's a reaction. It's actually nothing worse than when you change your leg and nothing happens. If that is the case, you need to tap it up with a stick and wake it up a little bit. You need to sort of agitate it, maybe as you're going around a little bit, tap it, tap it a few times, even if it changes behind a few times from the stick because it's a little bit annoyed at you. Start getting your reactions back if you've got a horse that's really ignorant and not answering the leg, which happens a lot. Most horses will get tense and will get hot with flying changes. It's, that's not the end of the world, but do remind the horse to be controlled again, go back over your simple changes if you need to, canter trot transitions again if you need to, get him back calm before you put him away. Don't let him think that, and then quite often if you've done one or two and you're happy with them, leave it, let him think about it, calm him down, bring him out again the next day or the day after and you'll be amazed at how much has sunk in. If you go on too long, quite often you make it worse.